Thank you for joining us this afternoon for our Artist Exchange event. Artist Exchange is a group created by and for artists to share new work, ideas, resources, and opportunities monthly over lunch. So grab your lunch and a beverage <laughs> and join us as we discover the work of two artists, Z Morvitz and Patty Trimble. And now, please welcome pa our host, Pamela Blotner. Hi, thank you, Shelley. And thank you, guests. And thank you all, everyone who has joined us this morning. It's a privilege to introduce these two artists who I've known, I think, um, almost 20 years, uh, more, more Z than Patty. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of their work and then they will talk about their collaborations. First, let's start with Z. And Z's been living and making art in Inverness since the late 70s after receiving an MFA from UC Berkeley, where she studied with Elmer Bischoff. She's a founding member of GRO and is currently the director of the project space programming for visual arts. Initially a painter, Morvich switched from large-scale paintings to drawings and mixed media works on paper, including handmade artist books and altered books. She's worked on many collaborative uh, projects with artist friends and her mixed media collaboration with Patty Tremble, who we will also hear from, began in 2020, but was suspended by the onset of the coronavirus pandemic. And so what I'd like to ask you now, Z, is to, is to give us a little bit of an idea of how you moved from large paintings into doing the more intimate and collaborative things that you do now. Was it deliberate or is it in instinctive? A um, <laughs> little bit of both. Uh, if Shelley would put up the first of the images. Um, I, I started as a painter because uh, you know, I was um, studying um, at the Art Students League of New York and painting was the kind of heroic uh, art medium of the time. Uh, I, was, um, I was fascinated by the intimacy and the immediacy of uh, artist books. Uh, when, I, when I kind of found them, uh, they were so under the radar at that time and um, yeah, there we go. I, that, that I just, I really liked, uh, I, I liked that aspect of, of, um, of artist books. And I began to think of my own paintings as book pages. I, um, I was keeping a notebook. I, I always keep a notebook. And I was working with Ms. Mays theater about, and we were doing a project on alchemy. So I had a notebook full of alchemical images and sayings and stuff. I'm not ready to go to the second slide yet. So um, the, the large paintings, I mean, this is like about 70 inches tall. It's big. Um, were kind of blown up of versions of tiny book pages. Um, here's, here's my notebook from that period with alchemical stuff uh, in it and writing and so forth. And I really liked working on this medium, which is fiberglass. Uh, I had a gallery that kind of handed me back and show these to clients because it hurts our fingers to handle it. So I decided to try my hand at large paper drawings. And so now you can switch the slide, Shelley, if you would. Um, and here I am, this is like a two, the year 2000 and I'm drawing on a sheet of paper, essentially the same size as that uh, painting you just saw. It's probably 70, 72 inches high and about 50 inches wide. 
And what I was using were ideas from my notebooks, but I never um, actually like plotted these things out. I just tacked it to the wall and I walked over and started drawing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, I, I really like doing these big things, but they were also awkward to handle and to show and so forth. And I got a residency in Ireland that was in a remote area of the west coast of Ireland. And it was so remote that they said, you must bring your own materials because you, you can't find anything like that, like your art materials out here. So I had to choose paper that would roll up and fit into my um, suitcase. So a sheaf of smaller sheets of paper and a few pencils and some watercolor. And Shelly, if you'll switch the slide, uh, I did a series of drawings like this that were inspired by you know, being in Ireland. And um, it, you can't tell from here, but it's um, graphite. Uh, uh, I used a small pencils and then watercolor, and I made a series of drawings like this. Um, if you want to uh, go to the next slide, uh, this was a notebook um, that I was keeping at the same time, and they were drawings made, again, just spontaneously. And I, I'm emphasizing the spontaneous aspect because I think that when uh, like Patty and I are collaborating, it's you know, things that we do in the moment of that are so exciting. Um, I went back to Ireland a few years later uh, and, I, and I had a, a slightly different project. If you'll go to the next slide, shall I? Um, I decided um, to make frottages on the Neolithic stone monuments that were everywhere around uh, where the uh, residency was. There are these big tomb and standing stone structures. And I took sheets of paper this time that were kind of softer. And I used this uh, large graphite crayon. You can see it in the lower right-hand corner right on the piece of paper. And I rubbed the paper as it was on top of the stone. And the stone in this case was the capstone of a very elaborate and beautiful tomb. Um, and when you're in the west coast of Ireland, these things are just everywhere and they're in farmers' fields and people's backyards. And um, there's a brass plaque telling you that it's a Neolithic monument and that's it. And you can just go and do as we did, um, Tim and I, and I made uh, these frottages. So I had a field of graphite marks. And then I took the sheets back to the studio and show if you'll um, switch the slide, I would make drawings. Now this time I'm using a ballpoint pen so that it's different from the, the field of marks under, underlying it. Um, so there's a, a, a darkness of the line and then there's the soft marks underneath. And um, I continued this project when I bought stones that the Blanc left uh, in, our, in the meadow near our house. Um, Tim and I have gone into the Sierras and found incredible granite slabs. <clears throat> so these are things that uh, I, it, it's an ongoing series. And I'm not sure exactly where it's going to take me, but um, what I really like is the interaction between the, the random surface 
and then the marks that I make. And each time I make a mark, I change the, um, what, what I'm working on so that it's a very alive exchange between the given of the paper with the marks on it and you know what I choose to go in and do to the you know to the marks and, and what kind of image I'm going to make. So uh, I think let's see what's coming next. You want to give me the next slide? This is a collaboration project that I did with my friend Joyce in Canada. Um, most of our collaborations are by mail because she lives so far away. But in this case, I was in her studio. And you'll see my drawing, which is in graphite and watercolor at, on the top, and her uh, water uh, patterning um, on the bottom. But we would switch and work in each other's areas until the scroll, which is in two parts, um, is very blended in its effect. And I think this was the first time that, that I'd ever actively worked, you know, into a drawing with the person, with another artist, and we worked together at the same time. And it was a pretty exciting uh, thing for us to do. And we haven't really been able to do that kind of live, um, interaction as much. I mean, most of the time I send her something, she sends me something, we work on it, we send it back to each other. And that, that's an ongoing thing. And I think it's 10 or 11 years now we've been doing this. So See, you, uh, you have a few minutes left to- Okay, I think I'm reaching the end of my, uh, yeah. Here we are, Th this drawing and the, um, it's not just a drawing, it's a painting. And the next one uh, were done after Patty and I were kind of shut out of our project because of uh, the COVID shutdown. Patty introduced me to gouache and I kind of fell in love with how that paint works. So the background of these, of this, and the next one that you'll see, um, Shelly, if you'll, yeah. Are, is gouache. And then I have taken, in this case, I've taken drawings from my notebooks and, and enlarged them and then recolored them and redrawn into them and <clears throat> pasted them into the, um, the piece that you see. So this piece includes drawing, collage, painting, um, I guess you could say digital, copies, I don't know, but it's a, it's a very, when, when people ask me what I do, I have to just say, well, it's mixed media because a little bit of everything in there. So that, that's the end of my um, presentation. That was great. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, that was great, Z. Thank you so much. It, I, I learned a lot about how you work. I would like though to, we would like to open the floor for questions from all of you. Anyone out there in the world who'd like to ask, see anything. I thought this was a fascinating uh, group of drawings and I kind of wonder about what your initial ideas from your notebook were all about. You talked about that as being the, the beginning of this series of drawings, but not knowing you or your work very well, what were those, some of those ideas that you were working from? I'd like to know. Um, I, uh, let's see, sometimes my drawings <clears throat> begin with a spontaneous gesture, and then I start to explore them a little further. Um, what I'm trying to do is find something that is surprising to me mm -hmm. that I haven't seen before. I mean, you know, when I find myself repeating images, it's like, oh no, you know, I have to move beyond that. But basically, um, I, I kind of, some, some drawings, some notebooks pursue one idea, like, 
you know, a, a central dark figure or something like that. And others are completely random, whatever I happen to be feeling at the time. And I work back and forth into these drawings so that they never reflect one idea. It's like an ongoing dialogue with myself, a monologue, I guess, um, where I look back at something I did a few days ago and I change it. So there is no, there's rarely an overriding um, theme. There's very few, I have dozens, literally dozens of notebooks and there's rarely a single theme that runs through them. Well, are they connected anyway emotionally to states of mind or I mean, how, how does that, how do you describe that? There must be some little bit more. I'm just curious about something a little more specific about that, the impetus for the work. Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm stumped because, um, you know, I'm going to tell a silly story, but Mm -hmm. um, I was with a friend in a, a cabin in the woods and we were sitting in front of the fireplace trying to light the fire with matches. And while he was talking to me, I was arranging the paper matches into some kind of form. I don't know what, it was just random. And he looked over to me and said, do you ever stop doing that? You know, making an image. And it's like, I, I don't, it's really hard for me. I don't sit down and say, I'm going to draw. I just draw. Mm -hmm. And that, that's just the way it's been mm -hmm. all my life. Mm. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we have time for, um, we have time for one more, one more question before we move on. I have a question. I'm, I'm, I'm not visible, but, um, I can start video. Um, see, I'm wondering, you know, about the collaboration and what kind of agreements you make with the, your partner and <clears throat> how you work with um, ego issues, you know. And yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think Patty and I will talk about that after her presentation of her work. We'll talk about our uh, how we collaborate together. Um, but with Joyce, uh, we, we actually make a set of, of agreements before we start. Um, you know, like what kind of drawing, how often we're going to send them back and forth to each other, you know, what the final product will look like. And when we were doing those drawings together um, in um, her studio, we had to, we hashed that out a lot. Like she thought certain parts of the, of the scrolls would be hers and some would be mine. And then we realized that we wanted to work on each other's. Uh, so um, I think, you know, you have to have a, a pretty firm trust in the other person and, a, and an ongoing relationship with them so that when you, talk about these things, um, you can uh, come to. Good timing as well, Z. And let's move over to, to Patty. And Patty, Patty is here, luckily, because she divides her time between Petaluma and Italy. And she creates uh, lyrical paintings, poems, and spoken word performances, many focused on the natural wild world. As a young artist, a young painter, she worked for a decade as a studio assistant for several New York school painters, um, a kind of immersion school for the absurd. Coed ended her day job as a freelance writer, writing essays on physical and environmental science, literature, and the arts. She is now, gratefully, 100% back to the absurd and, um, and metaphysical, the absurd metaphysical world of the painting studio, writing poems in the burning recovery forest as she slowly writes a book about her art world metaphors. Let's hear it from Patty. 
Um, hi, I think um, uh, my presentation here is going to be a little bit image heavy, so maybe we should start with the images. I'd like to say that what um, Z was talking about, about having a theme and the question about us working together is just, just before this meeting, um, I told Z that the next time around, I would like to work with themes. And she said, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're, I, it's gonna be a conversation, it's gonna be very interesting. And, and I'd like to say my work has been um, theme oriented and also very, um, Oh, can you can you go back to that first slide and just hang there for a minute? That's okay. So this this uh, is a etching I did in 1984, and um, so my origins in painting were um, from uh, surrealism, from um, actually being in Inverness and knowing John Anderson and Gordon Onslow Ford, and I really um, uh, got very intrigued with this idea that the unconscious could bring forth images that would tell us something. And um, so I just worked with line and made images and ended up with this series, which you'll see four or five slides of, of um, um, kind of what I was thinking about was the energy that um, life forms take without the um, kind of uh, uh, physical aspects of the self. Like what, what energy forms? I, I don't know that I was thinking so clearly in words at that time, but that was the general idea. So we can just see the next like four slides or so. These are all from the 1980s in New York. And I was working at the time for abstract expressionist painters and was, um, well, I'll talk about that in a minute, but um, these are some of the images. This was towards the end of my time working abstractly. And you can see there's kind of a central figure. I was thinking about uh, my own relationship to the painting, like where the energy could be coalesced in some way. And like Z, I worked with, you know, making marks and then seeing where the next mark le left me and then the next mark led me and the next mark led me and just kept going until the painting itself seemed to be talking to me and I let it uh, say what it had to say. Uh, then, uh, okay, so let's just hang on this one for a minute. <laughs> it's obviously very different. Um, I uh, moved back to California after I, um, I, I went to graduate school and uh, read a lot about postmodernism and th uh, thinking, and I thought, you know, I just need to change up what I'm doing. I suddenly just lost interest in that um, abstract expressionist vein. So I just started doing all sorts of things, and I was thinking, at the time where, where the human is in relation to um, uh, taking risks and, um, and into being kind of in a wilder world. We can, we can see the next one, next slide. I did these, uh, I, I had had a baby and I was um, uh, starting to uh, work as more as a poet and performance poet, so I was doing erratically making images. Like I'd work for like three months on some you know, series and then not work again for a year. Okay, and then the next one. This one was sort of the beginning of me thinking like who, um, I, I was doing a lot, we'll just hold on this one for a second. I was doing a lot of um, uh, performing of poetry for environmental causes and uh, talking like eco-poet basically um, and uh, thinking a lot about who I was in the wild world and who humans were in the wild world. And I started thinking that I, I, wanted, I wanted to put that into painting in some way or another. So I did a series of figures um, of uh, the human in the wild state, I guess you could call it. Uh, next one. And then I started thinking about um, basically in a way going back to that original idea of where the energy is centered in a living thing and how I could um, uh, convey that. And I painted a series of um, endangered plants and other kinds of plants. Um, this is not endangered, it's a magnolia. But that kind of centered energy of, of uh, that one feels in the body and also can feel in um, growing things. Now this one, um, we'll hold here just for a second, it's a little bit hard to see. Um, 
So this is an image of 150 uh, endangered species of California. And you can see Masaccio's um, Adam and Eve leaving the picture. And it's again, it's like, I'm still, I'm still in this, trying to understand how I can communicate this relationship that um, we as humans have to the natural world. Um, and also my love of the beauty of the natural world. And, and then also keep that um, uh, original surrealist spontaneity because it's not like I wanna make a picture. This one you know, just came to me as the others did in a natural uh, collage way. I just, uh, uh, um, I was thinking of a theme and then it emerged as I worked. Okay, and then the next picture. And then I, so I live in Sicily half time and I started thinking about this one. Let's just hold here for a second. Um, I started thinking about, uh, I wanted to go back to painting. I missed painting and I feel it's just, it's just magic to me. And so uh, I started thinking, um, so what is the human relationship to the natural world? What's my relationship to the natural world? And I started looking at the way that other humans have um, portrayed, um, you know, wilder plant kingdoms, and and so I so I just took some of those images and started collaging them and working with them. This background here is partly from um, uh, Livia's um, uh, the murals in Livia's uh, quarters in Rome, and um, you know from uh, Roman ancient Rome. And uh, then there's a Baroque thing there, which is plant-like. And I just was trying to look at how, how art and the natural world um, have collided over history, how different people have portrayed it and how I could play with that. So this is one of those paintings. And then, and then the next slide. Oh, here we are. Okay, so, so <laughs> we're going forward fast. Okay, so I've been thinking about all this and um, um, I um, had been writing poems and um, mostly about starting with ideas of the natural world and building on that. And then when uh, COVID happened and I had to shelter in, I had been, oh, I had also been working with Z um, uh, doing these collaborations, which were more in the vein of what I used to do and overall all over patterning and kind of a, another world that, that we could enter without any, you know, human bodies in it, just this world. And, um, and when sheltering in happened, I just was stuck in my garden and I kind of um, just found myself inadvertently pulled back into the painting studio and started painting these garden paintings. And uh, this is, um, these are like um, five by five feet, five by six feet, a series um, of. Um, Patty, I hate to interrupt at this point, but we're, we're, we're going to run out of time for you two to talk about your collaborations. Okay, so just, just go through these. They're all my recent garden paintings. That's fine. It's, there's only one more left after this. That's it. Okay, uh, thank you. That was, that was lovely. Do we have any questions from our viewing audience before they talk about their work together? If not, shall I kickstart it? Sure. Okay, this is one thing that, that you don't have to answer because I know that, that, um, that Z was not nailed down about it. It seems to me that there's sort of a spiritual aspect to both of your work that you express in terms of space and other actual movements on the canvas and on the paper. Is that true or false? Um, I have a very difficult time with that word. <laughs> I think that all communication is spiritual it's, you can't grab it. You know, there's something magic that happens when we write a little, you know, something goes to the other person or when we paint. So I, um, I'll just leave it at that. I kind of, uh, I'm, I'm in the same uh, ballpark as Patty with that. Uh, 
I guess, I guess the closest I've ever come to having that feeling is um, when I was visiting those Neolithic tombs, the depth of time itself uh, was very tangible to me. And, and, so, and I feel that art itself is this um, communication across time and culture, you know, so that when you come across an object from an ancient culture or an object from a, a current person, that, that, I don't know if you would call it spiritual, but it's, um, it's, it, it's a special channel of communication, I guess I would say. I felt that really strongly when I was looking at plant images from a million cultures over the years. It was very moving when I, not just looking at them, when I tried to paint them, that was really moving. It was like I was communicating across some unmaterial plane. <laughs> this seems like a very natural segue into your talking about your collaboration. Can we start? Yeah, maybe we should start with you, Z, you talking about how we started working together. Well, maybe Shelley could put an image on the screen from that, from our collaborative process. No, oh, then maybe I should talk quickly about those because, yeah, okay, we'll see. Okay, coming right up. One moment. So Z and I started collaborating in 2017, actually, and it was pretty funny and um, uh, diverse because we didn't really know how to begin. And I was living in Sicily and she was sending me postcards by the mail and then over the internet. And we stopped the mail because mail in Sicily sometimes doesn't get there for like three months. Anyway, this, this is what the result of that was, these pictures. So I had done a watercolor, sent her a picture of a watercolor. And then, uh, sorry, these aren't sized right, but these are the additions that she made to the. And then this piece, um, I sent her this um, uh, Venus image and then that's her drawing uh, added to it. You can go through these kind of quickly, Shelley. And then I added a flower and then uh, somebody put them on a, on a mountaintop in, in at Glacier Point, I think in Yosemite. And then these trees grew on one side of it. And then what happened? Oh, I put, okay, which meant, okay, enough of that. And, <laughs> and I wanted to say, I wanted to, I really um, wanted to collaborate with Z because, um, it's, it's this thing, um, uh, what she said about wanting to see surprises, just to do things kind of randomly and see. And, and also in my poetry, I can put so many images into a poem and I stop myself when I put them into, into painting sometimes. So I thought collaborating would be a way to shake it up and open up new horizons, basically. Z, your turn. Oh, well, so, um... I have a lot of mixed feelings about those things that we sent back and forth to each other, partly because the, um, the postcard, well, it was just difficult. It, it was just a difficult medium. And um, I prefer when the, when the medium doesn't hit you in the face every time you try to work on it. Anyway, um, th this piece is actually kind of in the middle of our sessions together. Um, after we had worked on um, some things in color, but um, I, I'm very intrigued by uh, dark and light stuff. So um, it, was, it was fun to try something with minimal, minimalist color. And um, it was a relief for the, I think for me, and I'm sure it was for Patty that we could actually work together in person instead of sending these things. And because these are bigger pieces of paper, not five, you know, four by six postcards, we could stretch out a little bit. Um, I think this one, well, they're, I think they're, they're pretty interestingly integrated where 
I don't know if someone that didn't know us could could tease out the parts that Patty did and the parts that I did, and we worked on top of each other's <coughs> uh, paint and and line. Um, so Z, talk about how big this is and how we did it. Okay, so uh, we started. We, we started by working one, I think I started working on the left mm -hmm. and Patty started working on the right and we thought we would meet in the center. <laughs> but at some point, uh, we actually switched sides and then we worked on each other's side so that, you know, we, we built things into each other's drawings until they, they merged pretty much. I, and I would say this is like, um, maybe this piece of paper is 20 inches tall by, I don't know, 60 inches wide, something like that. Would you say, Patty? I think each of those pieces of paper is three feet. Oh, maybe so. so. Maybe it's six feet long or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. something like that. What and, and this is is where, that? Oh, can we go back to that last one? Yeah. yeah, I was going to oh. say this is this is where I learned from Patty how to use gouache, or I started to learn. What interests me is that Z and I both have backgrounds uh, from when we were really young in surrealism and just understanding and looking at a lot of surrealist imagery. And this one sort of, to me, goes back to that it's sort of surreal landscape. And it was a surprise. It's yeah, surprising to me, and fun. Yeah. So what's that next one? That next image, I don't know. Okay, so so we have, this is a series. There's four of them and it ends up in one thing. I just wanted to show them because they're, um, it's sort of, you know, four steps in the process. You can just show them kind of fast, Shelly, if you want. Next, yeah. Oh, we turned it upside down. <laughs> All right, now I see it, now I see yeah, it. Yeah, there it is, okay, and then that's the finish. Yeah. I, think I love this one too. What I like is that he spread things out all over the page, and I tend to um, cluster together. So um, it was really interesting to ha have the page explode with with moving parts. Um, I, I really like that aspect of it. I feel we're kind of, um, we did have to stop because of COVID and I feel we were in the middle of trying to really figure out how to work together. Um, even though we like the result of some of the things, I still feel um, we're just gonna keep going forward and feel our way into it and talk more and, and find, um, I don't know, not exactly a method, but maybe starting points or something, I'm not sure. We had, we had pretty different palettes too. You know, in terms of what colors we like to use. You know, Patty put that red spot in there and it was very disturbing to me initially. But then I, I got to like it a lot, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's a learning process too. You learn from the other person um, in a wo wonderful way, in a tangible way. I was going to ask you, where you, what you would do, how you would concentrate, what would the movement be next? But I think you just answered those questions yourselves. And it seems to be the answer is being spontaneous and responding to each other in different ways. That and also, I mean, I'd be more, I'd be interested in um, almost purposely putting in representational things just to see what happens and maybe words, but also, or maybe just saying that that's acceptable and then starting with a theme. I like the idea of thematic, uh, I mean, like a poem, you know, it's about something. I really like the, that idea, even if it's absurdly about it. Yeah, I like the idea of doing words too. Mm -hmm. I love having words in uh, you know, drawing, in the midst of drawing. It's okay with you if you if you haven't other things to 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 share with us. I'd love to see if anyone in our audience would like to ask you something at this point.
If not, you can keep going. Oh, can I ask a question? Uh, was that the end of the of the collaborative uh, stuff that you sent? You actually Jean, have a couple Jean of minutes. wanted to ask a question, Jean Hagelin. Hi there. This is fabulous. I'm I'm just fascinated um, and enjoying this so much. And I, I I may have missed it, but I'm just curious when you're when when you were working like on that six foot painting, were you working side by side in the same studio or was, so so you were like sharing the same space and, and yes. one who was working yes. on one edge and one was working on the other. And then, um, uh, so, I mean, that's a really intimate collaboration. Yes. Um, were, so what was that? Were you sort of like spying at each other's work or were you, were you gossiping or what was happening in the-, in I, had, the I had a lot of moments of, go, of going, there she goes again. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then relaxing, this is what I meant by work. When you work with someone, you, you get trust after a while. And it's not even so much trust in the other person, it's trust in yourself that you're just gonna accept whatever it is and work with it. And it was, it was really great in that way. But, um, but then a couple of times we backed up and went, you know, that looks like a little mole smoking a pipe. Let's get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't have a problem with Patty being there in the studio with me. And Patty was like, don't, don't look over here. You know, <laughs> separation. I didn't care um, so much. Um, I, I think it, it, it just, w where I was worried was like, if, if, if Patty would obliterate something that I had drawn, uh -huh. you know, that, that was what I was sort of on guard against, uh -huh. you know, how I would deal with that. And, that. and just as Patty said, at some point you just say, okay, however it's gonna happen, let it, let it flow. Yeah. Um, we would talk furiously and then we would have moments of complete silence. And, you know, and it was all, it, it, I don't know, it just worked. Yeah. It's really uh, uh, brings a lot of energy to be working side by side with someone on the same project. It's very, that's, that's why I think maybe on a theme would be amazing because it, it's so all encompassing, but I really loved it. And also it was, I don't think, I don't think anybody wrecked anybody else's things ever. I think we just, <laughs> we just went back and forth. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, but it really taught me also my own limitations of, of um, what I could stand or something. <laughs> I was going to comment that I, I saw in, in one of the drawings, um, there was some very delicate line work in pen. And then there, somebody had gone over it with these gray gouache lines, pretty much obliterating it. And I, I, I felt a little emotional, like, oh my gosh, if, if that was my line work and somebody did that, I don't know how I'd feel, but it could be that the same person who did it is the one who obliterated it. I don't know. <laughs> I, th I think it will, I know what you're talking about. I think it was me doing both, pretty sure. Because that's what you learn. You learn to obliterate your own stuff. I mean, I do that when I work on my own things anyway. So, yeah. 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 I, I have, I'm not sure if I'm muted. No. Oh, I you're good, honey. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I'm curious about how you present this work to the art world. And, you know, so much of the art world is about the single artist, you know, the individualist aspect of it. And I'm wondering how you approach the art world uh, with this in terms of exhibiting your work. Because it's, well, we haven't. you know, we haven't really, done it. yeah. Well, we haven't, but also I don't feel like I'm really in the art world anymore. Um, you know, it, it's like, I just feel like I can do whatever I want. I mean, and, and I don't know, I was thinking maybe we should make up a name or something. I have no idea. We, we haven't done it yet. But Z did a fantastic show with, um, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot your Joyce. Joyce. Joyce, yeah, at, at uh, Sometimes Books. It was beautiful. And it was just, you know, called a collaboration and, and really very, very interesting, beautiful show. Yeah, we got a lot of people asking questions about, about the collaborative aspect of it. And it was, a, it was pretty rich, you know. Uh, 
yeah, I don't know how we present this. You know, the, the art world just isn't receptive as far as I know to that, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's too intuitive and too inward, probably. There's a lot of, uh, actually a lot of collaborative work done. Um, I try to go to the Biennale in Venice every year because I live in Italy and there's a lot of collaborative, collaborative work being done. And um, it's just shown as, you know, two artists or an artist group or artist collective or something. So it's not really an issue. It's just that uh, I'm not really in that world. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, th I think it's very important to get over oneself. And this is a really great way to do it. And um, yeah. it's, it's agree. And also art is a collaborative um, process. It is. I mean, whether or not I'm working on Z, a painting with Z, I'm, I'm looking at her work and thinking about it and it comes back into my mind and comes out in my work as does everything I look at, everything I read and every conversation. So it is collaborative to kind of accept that and let it flow through you is really, it's a good thing to do. I think that that's, that's a very lyrical, very poetic way to end this, this conversation. Thank you so much for, for being with us today. Um, and I hope that, uh, that you will continue doing this and that we'll get to see more of your work. And in the meantime, um, I, I would like to invite anyone who is in, in the audience to be a participant. If you would like to, please let me know. Um, my email is PamelaBlotner at gmail.com. And if possible, suggest someone you would like to be in conversation with. That said, I'd also like to ask anyone out there, if you have uh, any, any opportunities or ideas to share with the group. If there's anything coming up and what you'd like to do about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Enjoyed it. All right. Um, well, I have one thing to share uh, with the group and that is that Gallery Route One, uh, their fellowship program is open now for uh, applications for any uh, San Francisco Bay Area artists age 21 to 40. So if you know anyone that fits that category, we're accepting applications through October 1st for that. And I was also um, just wanting to um, talk about the collaboration a little more and what uh, what you might suggest to people who want to start their own collaboration, um, how to go about doing that. Oh, find somebody you like and go into the studio and start working, get vaccinated and go. <laughs> um, I just, I did want to say one thing about it. I felt like there was one point um, when Z and I were doing the postcard thing where she sent me um, her beautiful things and I kind of wrecked them and then I sent her something and she kind of wrecked them. I just want to say that you can fight visually and it's really fun. I mean, you don't have to get along with the person in a certain, I mean, you have to get along with them as a, you know, in terms of respect, but um, you can argue visually and it's, it's so whatever happens in the beginning, even if you have very different ideas, it's, it's, it's worth trying. I would, that's a I would agree with that. It's, 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 a, it's a give and take, it's a push and pull. And you have to kind of find a, a medium and a space, a medium that you're comfortable using and a space you're comfortable working in. So you don't feel like you're invading somebody else's space or they're invading yours. You know, you have to, you have to establish um, a kind of congeniality and then you just have to go for it. I think it's a form of play. It's like imagining one's a child again, and that's one way to do it. But I, when I've collaborated on poetry, I've sometimes done it on stage with someone I never met. And you just have to go, okay, first thought, whatever. And sometimes it's really dumb and sometimes, but it, but in visual art, what's nice if it's really dumb is you can, um, 
You can erase it. <laughs> yeah, you can erase it or you can put a big red dot on it or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I just think, you know, two minds are better than one. It really adds to, up to a lot of really interesting things. All right. Well, uh, Pamela, if you had something else to say, you need to unmute. Okay. Okay. Um, I just wanted to, again, to thank you. I think this has been very informative and it makes me think that we should have more artists on that collaborate and ask them about their process. Uh, but in the meantime, we will have two other artists talking next month. I believe that it's um, it's May fifteenth, right, Shelley? Yes. Okay. And um, and Becca Baroli will be one of them, and she will be partnering. We hope we haven't got absolute uh, uh, confirmation with an artist named Richard Jonathan N Nelson, whom I did not know. Uh, they are simpatico. Plus, they both uh, work restoring antique rugs. So that's going to be an interesting thread to follow. So that said, I think it's over to you, Shelly. Great. OK. Um, I want to add that Becca Baroli is a past uh, artist fellow from Gallery Route 1. And interesting that she works restoring rugs because um, she weaves uh, with metal and um, make, creates textiles, but out of metal wire. So that should be really fun to see. Um, so like Pamela said, if you're interested in presenting as an artist at a future artist exchange event, send an email to Pamela Blotner at gmail.com. If you were moved by today's presentation and want to support the work that Gallery Route One does to bring art to the community, then please visit our website and make a donation today, as long as it's working. <laughs> <laughs> we are having some problems with our website at the moment, our donation page. So um, thanks again for coming. And we hope to see you at our next Artists Exchange event on May 15th. Thanks, everyone. Thank well, you. Thank you, Pamela, and, and um, too, for hosting. This was really good. And thanks, thanks Shelly, very much. For very much. Thank, you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, Mary wants to say something. Yes. Oh, um, yeah. Um, I have to unmute. No, um, you're unmuted. You're fine. Okay. okay. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you so much for doing this and Pamela uh, so much for um, taking the initiative and in organizing this. And, you know, I have um, known both of these artists for many, many years and know their work very well, but I learned so much uh, today in this our conversation and presentation. It was just terrific. And so I hope uh, we'll get more people to join in and continue. This was really wonderful. Thank you. And Thank I you, Mary. That, that means a lot to get that, to get that feedback. And, and it, uh, it makes me think maybe we should even open an, a nomination. Uh, uh, platform where we can talk about or suggest who we'd like to hear from. I'd like to hear from Mary. Yeah. I would too. <laughs> really. I, and the show is just beautiful at Gallery Route One. I would like to hear more about her work. Thank you. I would too. And Elizabeth, whom I see in the audience, love to hear from her. That's oh, it. we have a question in the chat from Dottie. Is it possible to send reminders? Um, if you're not on Gallery Route One's email list, we will be sure to add you, Dottie. Let me jot this down real quick. Okay, because we do mention it in our e-blasts. All right. Have a great rest of the day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.